Good evening and welcome to Nationwide Today, reaching you live from Abuja on the network service of the NTA. I'm Elizabeth Omori with the news. Nigeria being a major player in the oil and gas industry has taken a further step in effective utilization of the natural resources as President Muhammad Buhari unveils the National Auto Gas Rollout Initiative, which is a core deliverable of the National Gas Expansion Program. The Auto Gas Rollout event, as the President says, signifies the realization of government's commitment to ensure the domestic utilization of the nation's vast gas resources, which currently stands at over two trillion cubic feet. State House Respondent Jide Onifade reports. It is an important milestone in whitening of domestic supply and the provision of cleaner, safer, and better energy options for Nigerians, President Buhari says, as he unveils the National Gas Expansion Program, National Auto Gas Rollout Initiative. We are confident that Auto Gas Initiative will lead to increase domestic gas utilization and enrich the trajectory of national economic growth and development. I therefore encourage everyone to embrace gas in form of LPG, CNG, and LNG as an alternative fuel for autos and other prime movers. The global crude oil market is fluctuating, and with the full deregulation of the local premium motor spirit market, the president observes the National Gas Expansion Program is coming at the right time. With a frozen reserve of about 203 trillion cubic feet and additional upside of 600 trillion cubic feet, ranking Nigeria as the ninth in the world current, currently, the need for domestic gas expansion and utilization is apparent. These developments have made it imperative to focus on gas as an alternative fuel to move Nigeria from the conventional defenders on white products for autos and frame movers of industrial applications to cleaner, more available, accessible, and affordable energy source. And with the handover of mass transit buses to organized labor, the president pledged to continue providing support that will ease transportation challenges Nigerians are facing. In the State House, Jude Onifadi, and your news. President Muhammad Buhari is reassuring Nigerians that the Boko Haram insurgency inherited by his administration will not be handed over to his successor in office. The president, who stated this at a strategic engagement with Senate President Hamid Lawan, said more decisions and proactive measures are underway towards ending the menace. State House correspondent Adam Usambo has details. At the instance of President Muhammad Buhari, Senate President Ahmed Lawan led a high-powered presidential delegation to Borno State on a sympathy and fact-finding visit following the brutal killings of rice farmers in parts of the state. He is here alongside the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, a member of delegation to give President Muhammad Buhari a feedback on their engagements with stakeholders, especially the Zabarmari community, where the killings took place. After their discussions that lasted about one hour, Senate President Ahmed Lawan told NTA News that President Buhari will not leave anything to chance in the renewed onslaught against terrorism and insurgency. Mr. President said he inherited insurgency and he will finish with the insurgency before he leaves office by the grace of God. He will make available as much resources as possible for our armed forces uh, to be well prepared and armed to fight uh, the insurgency that has bedeviled that part of the country. This fight is a national fight. It's not executive or legislature, but they're working together and it's a manifestation of the clues working between the legislature and uh, the executive. One other takeaway is the resilience of the, of the community. Here are the people who have just lost loved ones and yet they came out, Zabamari, and welcomed us and uh, uh, the message of hope and commitment of the uh, Mr. President 
presence is remarkable. And the second one is really the uh, efforts and the leadership of the governor of Bornu State, and particularly in terms of resettling the IDP, you know, over 22 camps. And in order for the people to return to their places of origin, we have to beef up security, we have to also try to assist them in terms of um, as, um, education for their children, health facilities for the people, and, and above all, means of livelihood. The Senate President said on his part, the National Assembly will continue to give President Buhari the maximum support he requires to succeed in the battle against insecurity. This is one thing that we must do because there is nothing better than security. You provide security, everything will go on well. But I want to also add here that there is need for new thinking, there is need for new strategies, there is need for more commitment, there is need for more motivation for our armed forces. In addition to the support, we should also give them targets. Senator Ahmed Lawan called for more support, understanding and cooperation on the part of Nigeria as the government strives towards securing the country for a prosperous future. From the State House, Adam Sambo, NTA News. Meanwhile, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has reassured Nigerians of renewed commitment by the Buhari administration towards doing everything possible to achieve economic prosperity and addressing security challenges in the country. The Vice President stated this when he visited the Emir of Lafia just to see the Baji Mohammed I at his palace. While sympathizing with the people of Nasara State over the killing of APC Chairman Philip Shikwo, among other victims of banditry and kidnapping, the Vice President says the Buhari administration remains committed to end all forms of crimes and criminality in the country. The Emmy of Lafayette assured the Vice President that traditional rulers are working closely with government to address insecurity. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo also inaugurated the Infectious Diseases Diagnosis and Research Center, as well as a job fair designed to employ hundreds of youths in the states. The Senate has called on President Muhammad Buhari to immediately initiate processes that will see to the exit of the current service chiefs. This followed a motion by Senator Kashim Shatima on the killing of farmers in Borno State over the weekend, which urged the federal government through concerned bodies to provide relief to victims of that attack. It further called on the federal government to recruit 10,000 civilian joint task force in Borno State into the various security forces, restructure and remodel the nation's entire security architecture and for the federal government to probe the management of funds disbursed to the military so far. The Senate has confirmed the appoint reappointment of Professor Mahmoud Yakubu as INEC chairman as it received executive communication requesting the consideration of the Finance Bill 2020. In the same vein, the House of Representatives has passed a resolution condemning the killing of more than four tea farmers last Saturday on a rice farm in Zambamari, Borno State. During the debate on the matter of urgent public importance raised by Representative Sato Mohammed, the lawmakers also urged that a state of emergency be declared on the security sector, just as they called for restrategizing and change of tactics in tackling insecurity. The House resolved to invite the President to the House to explain the security situation in the country. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has transmitted to the House the Finance Bill 2020, which makes provision for implementation of the 2021 budget. The bill seeks key reforms in taxation, customs and excess duties towards addressing challenges due to the fall in the price of oil and other economic effects as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. And to other matters now, the Ministry of Might and Steel Development in is preparing industry players on how best to access the federal government's five billion naira mining support fund in 2021. This initiative has brought together miners across the country in a one-day workshop to deliberate on developing a new template for accessing the fund. Correspondent Moplan Dakok reports. Poor access to finance has led to deficiency of well-equipped mining laboratories, including poor infrastructure, which in turn affects the health of miners, leading to low output. In finding solution to these problems, the Minister of State Mines and Steel Development, Uketruku Oga, said the 5 billion naira set aside for licensed miners has now been modified to accommodate others 
who had not been captured based on previous requirements which accommodated only licensed minors. This advocacy program is apt because it's going to offer us the opportunity for us to look at how we can use this funds to drive the activities in this sector. If access to the mining support fund became most expedient in view of the exigencies of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is not a grant. Representative of the Bank of Industry, Olayin Kamubarak, who spoke on the modalities of the disbursement, said each artisan miner would get between 100,000 naira and 10 million naira, while small-scale miners are to get up to 100 million naira. The Bank of Industry is a developmental finance institution. We are not like your regular commercial bank. Even if you take the funds and you're having challenges, open up. Two ends are better than one. The workshop also agreed on a new template for the disbursement of the funds, which it believes will spur enormous growth in the sector. In Abuja, Muplang Dakok, NTA News. Away from mining, every year the campaign to raise awareness for persons with disabilities and to promote equal participation of persons with disabilities is once again on the front burner. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is leading the campaign to mark this year's International Day for Persons with Disabilities, celebrated every 3rd of December. Ruth Aguele reports. saying no one knows where the shoe pinches but he who wears it best describes the daily struggles faced by persons with disabilities in different aspects of their lives to ensure an inclusive society for persons with disabilities the ministry of humanitarian affairs disaster management and social development is holding this briefing to mark the international day for persons with disabilities the theme for this year's International Day of Persons with Disabilities is building back better towards a disability inclusive, accessible and sustainable post-COVID-19 world. The federal government will continue to be disability sensitive in supporting and providing a conducive environment towards promoting the participation of persons with disabilities and their leadership to enable a fulfilled life with meaningful contributions to societal growth and development. For the Ministry, the coming on board of the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities is a clear demonstration of government's commitment to ensuring a better society for all. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela, NT News. To promote and improve healthy aging care management, the Minister of Health, Dr. Saigi Ihaniri, has inaugurated a 22-month ministerial committee for provision of health insurance for retirees and elderly in Nigeria. Omenka Marachuku reports. The elderly and retirees of 60 years make up 6 to 7 percent of being 15 million out of Nigerians' population and the size of some countries. The elderly most at times face glaring health challenges as well as strains from financial challenges and issues of adjusting to a retiree's life. It is in view of these challenges that the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ehanire, is inaugurating this committee to says the current situation of health insurance coverage and access to health care for retirees and senior citizens. I assure the committee of the support to achieve the goals of your assignment. Also, the outcome of this initiative will be of high value to the government. And now, by the powers invested in me as Minister of Health, I hereby inaugurate this committee. Chairman of the committee, Linus Aute, believes the inauguration underscores the seriousness of the administration in the quest for universal health coverage. I inform you all that we have accepted this appointment with the utmost aim to justify the confidence reposed in us by government. We shall be guided by the prescribed terms of reference as issued by the Honorable Minister of Health. The committee will make recommendations to the Minister of Health on potential resource mobilizations and other mechanisms for the successful implementation of the framework. 
in Abuja, Ominka Marchuku, NTA News. Still on health, galvanizing the private sector towards taking ownership of HIV testing and treatment has been identified as another measure in ending HIV in Nigeria. Uche Ugochuku reports that this was the third of policymakers at the launch of a strategic document on HIV and AIDS in commemoration of the 2020 World AIDS Day in Abuja. Strategy documents will set the tone for a renewed effort in the fight against HIV and AIDS, drawing lessons from COVID-19 experiences. Last year, over 44,000 Nigerians were estimated to have died from HIV AIDS. We've spent 6.2 billion to identify and treat 70% of the estimated 1.8 a million uh, persons that live with HIV AIDS in Nigeria. So not only is Nigeria now putting the money to finance the people living with HIV, it has a pathway of owning the response. The federal government is currently committing 2.5 billion naira to the treatment of additional 50,000 persons living with HIV and AIDS to complement donor funds. And this has helped in reducing the prevalence from 5.8 in 2001 to 1.3 in 2018 among people aged 15 to 45. We must try as much as possible to domesticate and localize this production so that we can cut down on costs and make access to the treatment and to the test kits readily available to our people. The National Treatment and PMTCT Program, NTPP, has been reinvigorated with the support of our partners to strengthen the health sector response. The policymakers advise states to embrace the National Health Insurance Scheme with emphasis on HIV AIDS services. Uche Ugochuku, NTA News. Now, the 1st of December annually is declared World AIDS Day globally, and this year is no different as the Federal Minister of Women Affairs joins in the global solidarity, shared responsibility, and free testing for all. Mamsa Damon Dati has details. Wife? A mother and a civil servant, Ngozi Inaji joins a long queue at the Ministry of Women Affairs to check her HIV status. I'm not scared because I know the kind of life you live. I'm a married woman as you, as you can see. I know it's not gotten by true sex only, but carelessness, using uh, sharp objects and all that. I think in that aspect, I am so conscious of it. And I'm advising even you to go and take. <laughs> and with this exercise, the free HIV testing is declared open for all interested persons. Knowing your HIV status is absolutely necessary as not only does it give caregivers the opportunity to stop the virus from harming you, but access to the existing interventions. To this end, the global theme for 2020 World AIDS Day calls on leaders and citizens to take responsibility in sustaining efforts at eliminating HIV, especially in the face of COVID-19 and beyond. Uche Ogochoku reports. An estimated 34 million people are living with HIV AIDS worldwide, with the burden and prevalence reported among women, children and the youth. Helen Afran is one of the approximated 1.9 million people in Nigeria living with the virus. She still has tales of wars, despite government interventions economically and medically, even with the introduction of self-testing technique. We have safe stigma, environmental stigma, and family stigma. Some go to collect their ARVs and they have to run some tests. We have the liver function test, which is costed now. And while on ARV, it's not funny, I have to eat very well. And you know, food for now is expensive. The agency responsible for the control of AIDS in Nigeria, NACA, is however optimistic that although the country is currently at 73% of the first 90 of the 1990-90 targets, the 2030 goal will be achieved. More so with the progress made in identifying hitherto unidentified persons infected with the virus, linking them to treatment and restating those who dropped out of treatment. Our main challenge 
challenge is people agreeing to come out and demand for HIV testing and get tested. I can assure you, if everyone in Nigeria can get tested to know their status in the next three months, and in the next two years, we will reach the 95, 95, 95, and we will control HIV in this country. We are working together as a joint team closely with the government of Nigeria uh, to ensure that um, the adequate uh, policies and standards are maintained as per global expectation, but that we also ramp up uh, critical interventions like testing. And we want to commend the efforts that have been made, but we still have more to do. WHO theme, global solidarity, shared responsibility, employs all hands on deck to end the sketch. So, get tested. Uche Ugochukwu, NTA News. And delivery of HIV, AIDS, treatment and care to people living with the virus is key to ensuring that Nigeria gets on track to end the epidemic by 2030. This stakeholders in the health sector say is needed to fast track the nation's drive to achieve government's vision of zero AIDS related deaths. Woodwork Eaton reports. Most of their results as at 2019 indicate that Nigeria has HIV prevalence rate of 1.4% among adults aged 15 to 49 years. Previous estimates had indicated a national HIV prevalence of 2.8%. This therefore gave a reduction from the current rate in the country. In Akwaibum state, for instance, the HIV rate has also reduced from 10 to 5.5%. As Nigeria joined in the celebration of 2020 World AIDS Day, some people in the state say they are aware of their HIV status. When you get to know your status, you know exactly how it's going to influence your style of life. At least every three, three months, a normal human being should go for testing and know his or her HIV status. Even with the emergence of COVID-19, HIV still remains one of the serious epidemics in Nigeria. Hence, people are encouraged to avail themselves for testing as several treatments are available. With the kind of drugs that we have now, if everybody is taking this drug that is positive and is adherent to the drugs, we will get to what we call U equals to you. We are advocating and imploring everybody who does not know their status to come out and get tested to know their status. The theme for World AIDS Day 2020 is global solidarity, shared responsibility. While Nigeria is adopting the theme, united to end AIDS in the midst of COVID-19, get tested in Uyo. Uduak Etham, NTN News. This is Nationwide on NTA. Time now to link up with Dotson in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Dotson. Hello, Elizabeth. Now still giving perspective to the 2020 World AIDS Day. In Nigeria, 13 out of every 100 1,000 persons randomly selected are likely to test positive to HIV. This is according to data by the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA. However, getting many Nigerians to embrace the Know Your Status campaign is a challenge. Joy Ken Abakwea takes a look at the HIV and AIDS, the Nigerian situation. They brought a young man here, very sad. They brought him from a private hospital. They had found out that he was HIV positive about two weeks before. By the time I, they came to tell us that, oh, there is a patient outside, he was too weak to come out of the car. We went to the car to look at him and he was dead. Tales like this one by Dr. Agatha in Kiruka David are common in Nigeria due to unfounded beliefs, outright refusal to take the HIV AIDS test, and the fear of being stigmatized. But while some are in denial, many others have made lemonades out of the lemons life has thrown them. 23 years old Anita Ikwe, a conflict and peace resolution student, was born with HIV. HIV is not a dead sentence. HIV don't kill. The point is, you take your medications, stay happy, stay positive always. Though great successes have been recorded in the fight against HIV in Nigeria, the fight is far from being over. 
The 2020 quarterly fact sheet of the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, puts the annual number of HIV infections in the country at 103,404, while an estimated 1.8 million Nigerians, the survey reveals, were living with HIV in 2019. Over 40,000 deaths from the disease were recorded same year. This is our call to everyone all over the country. Help us do one thing. Just know your status today. Changing this narrative, experts say, depends largely on the people's attitude to testing and treatment. Tests are free in many centers. And then when people know their status, if they are negative, they are counseled on how to remain negative. In the last few months, the COVID-19 pandemic affected effective provision of HIV services. While this may have consequences on some patients, a majority experts say are safe. Ending the HIV AIDS epidemic, resilience and impact is the theme for the 2020 World AIDS Day. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakpuya, NT News. And away from the World AIDS Day, let's now talk security, where luck has run out of some suspected oil bunkers in Arepo area of Ogun State after being arrested with seven trucks conveying millions of liters of petrol intercepted by operatives of the Operation Awadze. Annie Daniels has details. The suspects, all men, denied having a concrete knowledge of the act. I brought uh, Arepo Ayo for surveillance. I did not go inside with them. So when he called his own back up, so I was sleeping inside the car. I saw uh, another man knocking at my door, and I came out. I came down. Say, what are you looking for? Yeah, where you are? Why you are parking here by two o'clock? I say I brought a repo. I you. Based by them, he say go borrow me, go borrow me money two thousand naira. So now I come for Lord they go there. Even driving, I know I've been driving. Not be my top boy, sir. Me and you. Gaining access into the scene of the heinous act was not an easy one. Following the bad terrain. The siphoned fuel was concealed in nylon bags and covered with sacks. The atmosphere was also full of petrol stench as a result of leakages from the bags. This road, which is about 1.1 kilometer, was graded in preparation for this operation. And that was also a signal, you know, to show that something was likely to happen here. And... Uh, because the area is still not um, built up, it's still um, sparsely occupied. It is an obvious fact that it's quite an organized crime. You can see it. I uh, do you know what it takes to hire uh, nine, nine trucks of uh, uh, this size, and then even grading the, getting a grader to grade the road, and then get, uh, buying about a, a three point something kilometer length of a hose to, to, pipe, uh, to pump products. So you know that those that have done these things are highly syndicated. It is not something any uh, this uh, minor miscreants can do. While some of the trucks had loaded and about taken off, others were waiting to be loaded. One of them, already loaded, was afterwards set ablaze. This feat is achieved by the Operation Awase, comprising all security outfits in Nigeria. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. And away from security, stakeholders at the 42nd National Council of Establishment have called on governments to constantly renew and update the knowledge and skill of its workforce in order to uphold the mandate of implementing government policies, programs and projects. Nosa Usla has details of the conference held in Lagos. The conference is to provide opportunity for the council to realign and update relevant aspects of the schemes of service in line with emerging realities in both academic and in the actual workplace that will drive the process of improving service delivery in all the public services in the Federation. We need to raise the bar of performance and productivity for more efficient and effective service delivery to the nation is a compelling one. As a nation, it is folks like you, indeed, that keep the civil service running the Lagos State Head of Service, Hakim Muriokwola, urged the delegates to brainstorm profound solutions to the challenges of public servants to improve their productivity. The past changes are really, really fast, and it is inevitable that the future of the work itself will be significantly determined by emerging technologies. 
To herald the conference, the delegates earlier paid a courtesy call on the Lagos State Head of Service, Hakim Muriokola, at the Public Service Office at Alausa in Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. And that's it from here. Let's now take our first break on Nationwide. The news continues shortly. A scorecard like no other. Government has put in place measures and initiatives principally targeted at youths, women and the most vulnerable groups in our society. These included broad plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. The creation of 75 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund to provide opportunities for the youths and the micro, small and medium enterprises survivor fund, through which government is A. Paying three month salaries of the staff of 100,000 micro, small and medium enterprises. B. Paying for the registration of two thousand businesses at the Corporate Affairs Commission. C. Given a grant of 30,000 Naira to 100,000 artisans and guaranteeing market for the product of traders. These are in addition to many other initiatives such as farmer money, trader money, market money, and power, and tech, and and more in spite of a recession and a global pandemic. International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk App for iOS or Android, Intelsat 901 degree east. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. But good social media users stop, verify the information and reflect before sharing it. Now, are you a good social media user? Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source for a better Nigeria. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Thanks for staying with the NTA. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has issued advice for Secular to caution pilots, airline operators and others on severe dust haze fog phenomenon prevalent in Nigerian airports. In a statement by the General Manager Public Relations, Sam Adrodoi, the agency explained that adverse weather condition is expected in the southern part of the country in December, in addition to early morning fog, which might also be experienced in the months ahead, especially along the coastal areas. The statement further urged traveling public to exercise restraint and show understanding in this new tide as flights may be delayed or cancelled on account of weather situations. The NCAA expects strict compliance with this advice for secular as violation will be viewed seriously. Now, Nigerian women are, are set, have set out to walk the talk and back their words with action in ensuring that the issue of violence against women becomes a theme of the past. To this effect, wives of some state governors stormed Abuja to join forces with the Minister of Women Affairs in lending their voices and actions against the menace in commemoration of the 16th day of days of activism against gender-based violence. Momso Damien Dati reports. Color orange is still much in vogue the world over. 
At least for the 16 days, the painting is still on. Reason why these men from all stratas are converging on the Ministry of Women Affairs to illustrate their commitments to peace, harmony, and say no to violence. As governor's wives, mothers, leaders in our own right, we are very concerned about the spate of gender-based violence in the country. And that is why we got together in June of this year to set up this um, working group which is called Nigerian Governors Wives Against Gender-Based Violence. We work on these issues in our states, individually, and we work collectively to ensure that we have a robust response to all forms of gender-based violence. For these women, it's time to back actions with words. And on the issue of violence, the minister says, there is no going back. We will not stop after 16 days. It's a continuous battle until we see that the awareness is right and that all perpetrators are fully punished and at least we attain zero tolerance. I'm very happy with the commitment of the Governor's Forum and their wives follow suit. Being the 16th day of the 16 days of activism, today signifies a candlelight procession in... <laughs> in honor and memory of all the women and girls who lost their lives to one form of violence or another. In Abuja, Momso Damien Lati, NT News. And Amina in our studio in Kaduna has the next set of reports. Hello, Amina. Elizabeth, welcome to Kaduna. British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katerina Lang, has expressed the willingness of the United Kingdom's government to support Nigeria's fight against insurgency and other forms of security challenges confronting the nation. This is coming after an engagement with the Kaduna State Executive Council members on how to strengthen collaboration in dealing with these challenges. Mohamed Umar Ajingi reports. Kaduna State Executive Council members in a crucial meeting with a delegation from the British High Commission issues concerning insecurity, especially the recent massacre of farmers in Borno and pockets of conflict in some parts were on the front burner. We have uh, peace. Deputy Governor of the State, Hadiza Balarabi, seeks for collaboration of the British High Commission to tackle insecurity through its humanitarian dialogue organizations. The British High Commissioner says the government of UK has been carefully monitoring situations in the country, assuring that Nigeria will definitely get the required support. Well, we are indeed concerned about the different kinds of insecurity across Nigeria, including here in Kaduna, where there are incidents around farmers and herders and, and other kinds of violence. Kidnapping is becoming more prominent. And of course, we are all so sad about the terrible incident in Borno. We have a long-standing relationship um, with Nigeria, of course, but we're also trying to tackle the underlying drivers of the conflict. Besides insecurity, came other discussions on ending gender violence, rape, child molestation, support for education, health and agriculture. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Ajingi, NTA News. Military trading institutions in the country are to be provided with state-of-the-art facilities in tune with global standards to enable them to produce professionals capable of halting security challenges bedeviling the country. Chief of the Army Staff General, Lieutenant General Tukurisa Burte stated this in a message to the passing out ceremony of the Nigerian Military School Zaria. Sagir Mohamed Awal has details. The 62nd passing out parade had 294 boys who underwent leadership, academics, and military training. The reviewing officer and chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukul Yusuf Borate, represented, noted the giant stride the Nigerian Army is making towards addressing the security threats across the country. I am delighted that the commandant and his team have worked assiduously to ensure that these boys are given all required military and academic training to serve their fatherland. The Army, as you know, has been involved in various operations and exercises in support of civil authority. To mention particularly is the maintenance of internal security in addition to its constitutional role of protecting the territorial integrity of our beloved nation. 
scaling through the rigorous training gives joy to the young soldiers. Everything was so stressful, but one thing kept me moving. I know that at the end, after crossing over, I'll be awarded an enviable title of my next boy. And that's what I am now. The reviewing officer also inaugurated an intervention project in the school. In Zalia, I'm Sagir Muhammad Awal, NTN News. And that's it from here. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja. Thank you, Amina. For legal practitioners, former ambassadors and some academia, it was a weekend with a difference as they converged to celebrate one of their own, Clement Oji Chinaka, who marked his 55th years on earth with the launch of a book titled Environmentalism and Emerging Trends in Petroleum Industry Related to Litigation, Aisha Bali reports. This traditional symbolic presentation of cola sets the tone for the precedence of this public presentation of the book Environmentalism and Emerging Trends in Petroleum Industry Related to Litigation, authored by Clement Oji Chinaka. Speakers including Professor Sani Muhammad Adam, Vice-Chancellor, Administration University of Abuja says the book is coming at the right time with the Petroleum Industry Bill receiving attention at the National Assembly. So access to justice is very important in this country. People will have access to justice, people must, give, must give, be given the right to sue where, whenever there is an infringement on their rights. The author is of the view that environmental issues are both man and naturally induced and pose as a threat to livelihoods. And uh, you know most of the cases in the oil industry are all environmental, most of them are environmental claims. And uh, I needed to document my experience and uh, be able to, you know, articulate um, new grants as it relates to environmental litigation. We do reviews together. He's a good man, you know, he's good in everything he's doing. Yeah, I support him every day by praying for him. It is the hope of Clement Chinaka and others here that the book will be significant to the oil and gas industry. In Abuja, Aisha Ubaali, NTA News. And now let's pause here as we join Jenny in Port Harcourt for reports from that axis. Nice to see you, Jenny. To Elizabeth, hello and welcome. In forbearance of the Nigerian Navy's mandate to wipe out criminal activities from the Nigerian maritime domain, the Nigerian Navy ship Pathfinder has handed over a vessel with unspecified quantity of suspected illegal legally refined automotive gas oil to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The vessel was arrested along the Abluma Jetty in Port Harcourt River State. Robinson Derataide reports. On behalf of the commander, Nigerian Navy Ship Pathfinder, hereby hand over motor vessel Captain Samuel, this is the second time in two weeks the Nigerian Navy ship pathfinder is handing over vessels with suspected refined products and crew members to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for further investigation and possible prosecution. The vessel MV Captain Samuel was intercepted by the Navy on the 24th of October 2020 with five crew members suspected to be involved in illegal bunkering activities around Aboloma Jetty in River State. This is a demonstration of our determination to rid this area of any form of criminality and illegal activities within the Ottawa's. With the completion of investigation, which include laboratory analysis of the product, the EFCC team, headed by SP Tassio Abubakar, received the vessel and the crew members, all of whom are Nigerians. We are assured the members of the public that we are going to conduct a thorough investigation. And if the five uh, arrested uh, crew members were found guilty, they will be prosecuted. The Navy reaffirmed its commitment to ensure sanity in the nation's maritime domain, especially during the Yuletide, which may witness increase in illegal maritime activities. From Aboloma in River State, 
Robinson, Delateide, NTN News. The case of Bright Chinna to Mark, who died out of alleged gunshot by police personnel at Rumokoro Junction two years ago, and other murder cases dominated the fifth panel of inquiry of police brutality sitting in Port Harcourt. Ijomo Gweke reports. The five cases brought before Justice Chukunenye Uriri and other members of the panel were that of alleged acts of brutality, human rights abuses, and murder. Mark Akachi, who petitioned over the death of his brother, Bright China to Mark, on February 18, 2018, at Rumokoro Junction, is seeking justice and compensation to the tune of 100 million naira. He alleged that his brother, who was a taxi driver, met his untimely death as a result of gunshots released by a police personnel on a stop and search duty. Policeman walked to him that he wanted to hold up. He was in his, in his car. No, he didn't come down. Not to say that he fought the policeman. He was just shot at the head job. And that was the end of the young man's Does he have family married? He, has his, he was married. He was, his marriage was a year old then. And, uh, and uh, her daughter was foremost that, at that time. And since then, the family have been struggling to survive. While two cases were withheld for lack of evidence and witness, one was adjourned. The case of Tangod Wibeke, whose brother John Wibeke was arrested, detained and shot to death, was struck out because the case has been dispensed by a court of competent jurisdiction. In Portacot, Ijo Mugweke, NTA News. That's it from here. Nationwide continues with Elizabeth after the break. Dialogue, empathy, love and unity. These are vital components of nation building. For all to be well, we appeal that we should refrain from volatile, provocative, inciting messages and language. Let's build and not destroy. and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. My name is Nando Jamda. Mohammed. Stevita. Hussein Musa. Rodima Joel Tinji. Sayyid Musa. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than eight years now. And I said that Lantern. Nakai Chimami Shekara. I've been selling my tomatoes for about 10 years now. And I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. Now, when I say that, I'm going to go to Nigeria. And I say that, I'm going to go to Nigeria. And you can see how we are doing our small little work to make Nigeria great. As you can see, I'm a technician and I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. I'm a business. I'm a business. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. NTA News 24. A 24-hour news station brings to you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m., news update at 11 and 1 p.m., news desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., and late evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV Channel 419, GoTV Channel 46, Star Times Channel 101, and Free TV Channel 703. Jones. You're still watching Nationwide on NTA. Time now to head to Jaws, where Frama is standing by with some reports for us. Hello, Frama.
Elizabeth, and welcome to JOS. The resident electoral commissioner, Independent National Electoral Commission, Plata State, Hali Lupai, says the commission is committed to conduct a free, fair, and credible election in line with constitutional provision of the electoral law and regulations. The NA commissioner was speaking at a stakeholders meeting in Shandam preparatory to Plateau Southern Senatorial District by election, scheduled for Saturday, 5th December, 2020. Yildi Kenyang Lenladi reports. The stakeholders meeting is to update the people on the preparations by the commission for the conduct of the rescheduled Plateau South Senatorial District by election the zone comprises of six local government areas, 712 polling units, 68 registration areas, and 671,209 registered members. The meeting would also request for your support and collaboration, which have immeasurable benefits to the citizens of the constituency and the people of Plateau as it would nature sustain and encourage peaceful and greater political participation. To the police, the postponement of the election on 30 November 2020 gave them enough time to prepare well, just as the longer mayor of Shandam said the traditional institution will ensure the exercise is peaceful and orderly. We have at least three security personnel in every polling unit. And then we have very young politicians growing. They are seeing what we are doing. Let it not be a matter of life and death. Questions were raised on some key areas as representatives of some political parties say they are ready for the conduct of the election with 10 political parties participating. From Shandam Local Government Area of Plateau State, Yildi Gianyangdanladi, NTA News. Overloading, overspeeding, driving under the influence of hard substances, among other road-related traffic offenses, have been identified as some of the critical traffic infractions that cause road crashes on the highway. Sector Commander of Federal Road Safety Corps Plateau State Command, Isaac Akwarewo, identified this at the 2020 Ember Month Flag of Campaign with the team, Drive Safe, Stay Safe. Mary Domtu reports. Flagging of the campaign, Governor Simon Lalong represented emphasized that the safety of lives on the road is a collective responsibility of all. The governor said his administration is rehabilitating and building new roads across the city center in line with its three pillar policy of physical infrastructural development. I implore all the people of goodwill in the state to collaborate with the Federal Road Safety Group to ensure Sector Commander FRSC Plateau State Command said the Ember Moons campaign is strategic to make the roads safer for all road users. I want us to, as drivers, as passengers, to know that the way we behave while on the wheels we determine whether we have a successful journey or not. Goodwill messages came from the chairman, Nigeria Union of Road Transport Workers, representatives of the Operation Safe Haven, the NDLEA, Nigeria Correctional Service, the Nigerian Custom, Operation Rainbow, who all harped on the need for drivers to drive with caution to achieve maximum safety on the roads. The Red Cross of Nigeria just were also on ground to practically demonstrate how to administer first aid in the event of an emergency. In just Mary Domtur, NTA News. That's our contribution from Joss. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Farmer. Talking sports now, referees set for NPFL news season. Details and more on sports update with Amanze Marcus.
General Secretary of the Nigerian Football Federation, Mohamed Sanusi, has charged the Flying Eagles on making the nation proud in the Wafu B Under-20 tournament in Benin Republic. Sanusi, who visited the team's camp in Abuja ahead of their departure on Friday, assured the players of their welfare and entitlement as they prepare to begin their campaign in Group B with a match against Cote d'Ivoire on Sunday at the start Charles de Gaulle in Porto Novo. Still on football, the Nigeria Referees Association has assured on the readiness of its members for the forthcoming 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League season following a four-day medical and fitness test as well as sensitization seminars in Abuja. Olale Kokila Jolu reports that 110 referees are taking part in the program which ends on Wednesday. We had a record last uh, season despite the fact that the season was not finished. About 250 matches were played as against uh, 360 something games. And uh, for the very first time, we had a record of uh, about 37 away wins and uh, 70, about 76 draws. Well, we had a uh, home draws. That means something is happening to our league. And uh, I can assure you, we'll do better than that this season. Meanwhile, the Olympic Rings Monument has been reinstalled in Tokyo Bay after being removed in August as organizers ramp up preparations for next year's postponed summer games. The rings were later illuminated and the neighboring Rainbow Bridge lit up in a multicolored display as organizers looked to provide a symbol that the rearranged games can go ahead safely next year. The monument will remain in place next to Rainbow Bridge until the Olympics finish in August before being replaced with the Paralympics logo. Kenan Ima Aburike, NTA News. Kenan Ima Aburike there with sports updates. Now, President Muhammad Buhari sends heartfelt condolence to former House of Representatives, member and gubernatorial candidates in Anambra State, Honorable Nicholas Okachuku, over the sad death of his wife in an auto crash. The president described the death of barrister Nena Millicent as a regrettable incident that has not only robbed the Okachuku family of a jewel, but also deprived society of the positive contributions of an entrepreneur, school proprietress, and pillar of support for her husband in his political and philanthropic activities. President Buhari prays that God will rest the soul of the departed and comfort those she left behind to mourn her. And that ends nationwide today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm Elizabeth Omori.